بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وآله الطاهرين سيما بقية الله الأعظم بقية الله خير لكم إن كنتم مؤمنين ولعنة الدعم على آدائهم أجمعين من ألان إلى قيام يوم الدين أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته وأسعد الله أيامكم Greetings and felicitations upon the birth of uh, Imam Al-Asr alayhi salam to all our viewers, to the Ahl Bayt, to the Imam of our time as well, Tabarik and Mubarak to him as well. And uh, we welcome you uh, into our program which uh, is talking or discussing and investigating uh, the reality or the phenomena or the birth of the Saviour. Uh, if you may recall, in our last program, we have looked at the, uh, the aspects of Ghibat uh, Kubra and Sughra, the major occultation and the minor occultation, and uh, how this minor occultation transfers to the major occultation, and in regards to what sort of uh, uh, you know, uh, mechanism uh, went into play uh, in regards to protecting the uh, the principles of Deen, uh, which was a combined effort by different scholars in that period. And at the same time, you have the, uh, the different dynasties, because the Abbasid Caliphate have crumbled and, and, and scattered into different small, small dynasties. And the Buyud dynasty, uh, the Bu Ali Buya, as they say, the Buyud dynasty came into power, and how they were very instrumental. So after discussing all of that, uh, tonight, uh, we will continue our discussion, our programs, uh, indeed uh, days of celebration to all of you, inshallah, and let our actions, these programs be a source of joy uh, for the heart of our Imam, inshallah. Uh, in order to discuss tonight's program, uh, we have in our studio at Safir, uh, Sheikh Hujjatul Islam wal Muslimin. Ahmed Hanif. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Sheikh. Welcome. Thank you very much. And Mubarak as well. Same to you. Thank you very much, Sheikh. Thank you for coming. It's lovely to be here with you, with our viewers here at Safir, inshallah. Uh, Sheikh, tonight we want to extend our discussion from the time of the basically um, major occultation after those four naib khas you know, uh, specific or special representatives of Imam. And tonight we want to focus upon a very important figure in Islamic history, the scholar who have played a very influential and major role uh, to shape up uh, what we have today, our institution uh, of, you can call Marjaiyat, for instance, uh, and how uh, this whole sort of mechanism was kind of uh, uh, under the umbrella, under the auspicious sort of presence of the Imam of the time. Uh, there is tawqiat, as we say, you know, sir, which are known as like letters from the Imam Zaman, mm. which we call them tawqi. And uh, Sheikh Saduq, you know, uh, who he himself was the dua of Imam Zaman, because Sheikh Saduq's father was uh, the companion of Imam Hassan Askari, you know, uh, Babu Ayy was the companion, they lived together and, you know, may Allah give us tawfiq once again to visit the grave of the father of Sheikh Saduq and if you may recall, we used to do mubahisa, mm -hmm. you know, next to the mother say, Agai Gul Paigani, right. you know, right where this bazaar there, mm -hmm. there was this grave of Agai uh, Sheikh Saduq's mm -hmm. father and mm -hmm. we used to have mubahisa Babu there. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Good old days, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, very nice. <laughs> yeah. So he was a companion of uh, the eleventh Imam. So we could really see that how close knit mm -hmm. our scholastics or our scholars were with the Imams mm -hmm. and the instructions that they used to get from the Imam. So his son Ibn Babway, Sheikh Saduq, uh, in Kamaluddin talks about forty nine different tawqis, forty nine letters from Imam Zaman to pe people, to public, whether that be in the period of Ghibat al-Kubra or Sughra. What we want to look at, because this letter Tawqi of Imam is to Sheikh Mufid, and this happened to be, uh, 
a, 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 a sort of like a guidelines towards uh, our responsibilities towards the Imam, you know. Uh, so Sheikh Mufid, as uh, you uh, may know, just for the uh, uh, you know for our viewers to come to the understanding, he was a usuli. You know, we have these Akbari and the usulis, right? Sheikh Mufid he himself was a usuli, a scholar during the period of the Buyud dynasty. Mm. He was very much uh, given the uh, platform to execute, to exercise in Baghdad. You know, and uh, as you know that Sheikh Mufid's student was Sheikh Tusi, mm. you know, Murtaza, Sheikh Murtaza Ansari, uh, Sheikh, Murtaza, Sheikh Murtaza Said Razi, mm. you know, uh, the, the one who compiled Najul Balama, mm. right, the two children. And Sheikh Tusi, the founder of the uh, Najaf Seminary, mm. you know, Sheikh Tusi, Sheikh Uttaif, he was the founder and student of Sheikh Mufid. And then Sheikh Mufid getting a letter from Imam Zaman. So what I want, I'm emphasizing and revisiting this whole scenario just to let our viewers know that how close, you know, we have books, handwritten mm. manuscript of Sheikh Mufid mm. today. Right. We have manuscript of Sheikh Sadduq today. So I mean, it's just so how rich our, our sort of deen, our religion, our iman and our faith, our ideology is, is based, our faith is based on these sort of close net and very sort of you know text that belongs to Sheikh Tusi mm -hmm. you know one of the two of the Kutub Arba that we have is from right. Sheikh Tusi right. you know anyway so Sheikh Tusi Sheikh Mufid he gave a fatwa in regards to a lady who was pregnant because they came to Sheikh Mufid and they asked that uh, what shall we do the lady died and she was pregnant shall we bury her or shall we take the, you know, fetus, the baby out of the, you know, belly of the mother? Sheikh Mufid gave the verdict saying that you bury her. With the fetus. Yeah, oh. yeah. And apparently while they were, funeral was going on, they were about to bury. Somebody came down, a messenger came. And he said, Mufid have changed his verdict, his fatwa, is asking the, baby to be taken out and then after this a, a zaman passes by you know a time passes by a few years this young lad who have become young and is able to walk and visit sort of comes with his father to the house of Sheikh Mufid and tells his father says we are very much thankful mm -hmm. to you because of your verdict which you changed you know, this man, boy's life is saved mm -hmm. and he is now young. And Sheikh Mufid was shocked. He said, I never changed the verdict. And uh, he said that if it be so that my verdict or my verdicts are the source of, you know, life is being taken away, I rather not give any fatwas. So he shut his door down and he did not engage in giving fatwas. Mm. Then you have this tawqi from the Imam. And this title of Sheikh Mufid is given by Imam Zaman. He calls Imam Zaman as my brother. He calls Imam Zaman as Sheikh Rashid, you know, somebody, mm. a matured sort of individual mm. personality. And then he says, you are Mufid. And you give verdict and we are here to correct. Right? So we see, and now obviously this letter have many different details which perhaps we could discuss a bit mm. tonight, inshallah. Inshallah. Yes. So if you can shed some light on this toqi of the Imam, how Imam have, what Imam have mentioned uh, in regards to you know uh, you know how he's overlooking so to speak this whole affair of Ghibate Kobra. Yeah, Bismillahir Rahman Rahim. Um, I think one of the most important things in the um, Tawqi is the it's a very short Tawqi, mm -hmm. but um, he's telling him that basically um, we the Imams and himself in particular are overseeing 
the actions of, the, of those who are there um, in their best capacity to guide the community. And that they, uh, him in particular, will prevent them from going astray, from making the wrong decisions and so forth. And I think this is a, a very, very important statement. I think you might have it there in a more, uh, in a more direct translation. Um, but uh, uh, this is very important. Uh, it, in fact, underlines the, res the, the role of the ulama in guiding the society. Um, now, I think many of the um, you know, other hadith by the imams speak of the ulama as a class, speak of the ulama as a group, that they as a group um, would guide the community. Um, and you ask the question, one would ask the question, well, what about corrupt ulama? You know, what about ulama who serve, let's say, you know, the courts of the, you know, the oppressors and so forth? You know, I think this um, uh, talk here of, of, of Sheikh Sadduq, uh, sorry, Sheikh Mufid, um, uh, clarifies this. Um, not, not all the ulama, but those ulama that are mufid, mm -hmm. you know, those ulama who are sincere, those ulama uh, who are, uh, who stay away from uh, wrong deeds and so on, that will put a uh, distance between them and uh, the imams. It is those ulama who will be given that type of guidance, where, wherever they might make an error, and it is quite possible for them to make an error because they are not uh, ma'asum, you know, he will cur re rectify that particular error and so that the people will not be misguided. Right. And then, obviously, uh, when he says that Nasrul Haq, mm -hmm. you know, he calls Sheikh Mufid as a supporter of truth and haq. Mm -hmm. I mean, this itself points out to the importance of, of mushtahideen or right. ulama, you know, who are extensively working hard to provide an answer to the community right. with the Qur'an and with the Sunnah. And who are the path of truth, who are right. helping truth. Right. You know, because it's quite possible. In our days, for example, we see there are ulama who do not, uh, you know, uh, support truth. Mm -hmm. You know, who, who um, in fact would come and basically uh, encourage people to support uh, the Tawhut, you know, to support the oppressors in the society. Right. You see? Right. Right. And then uh, in terms of the responsibilities, like for example, for Olama, as you have mentioned, that it kind of indicates or points out to the uh, the support of the imam uh, or the scholars support of the imam to those scholars who are mufid you know those who will provide benefit uh, who are on haq but in regards to the lay person in regards to people who are the followers of the imam we find certain traces of our responsibilities towards the imam uh, uh, perhaps you could probably elaborate a bit more and we can discuss that in that sense. Uh, uh, well, you know, um, our responsibility or the, the responsibility of the ulama to the, um, the, 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 the ordinary people, um, I think by and large is clarifying for them their responsibilities on a shari'i level. Uh, showing them ways by which they could increase their spirituality, you know, and things of that nature. Um, and th that spirituality that is open to the people is something that is n not, is, is democratic. You know, in a sense, it's democratic. What I mean by it, it, it being, it's being de democratic with that information and with the sincerity of practice, they would be able to arrive at spiritual heights that could be equal to that of ulama or awliya. You know, in fact, in other words, they could become awliya, you see? Um, so what it shows is that egalitarian or just um, uh, system 
you know, that says that anybody can access divine knowledge. All you have to do is, you have to, is attach yourself to the Imam. Right. If we, there's this indication of where Imam points out to uh, in, in his Tawqi, where he says that you know, in the, during the time of the occultation, during the time of trials and tribu tribulation, uh, they should you know, kind of take refuge uh, in the du'as that are there. You know, like mm -hmm. for example, it becomes, uh, so we could say that this is one of the responsibilities or one of the ways of being in connection uh, with the Imam of mm -hmm. the time, which are by his du'as. Mm -hmm. You know, du'a itself, for example, uh, that uh, uh, and then with the du'as of the imams that are there, like for instance, in this very month of uh, of Shaban and on the fifteenth night, uh, there are very special du'as mm. uh, of the imam that we recite um, on the fifteenth. Uh, that other than the night being the powerful night, mm. as Shabe Barat, as it's known as, as this night is a special night of the descent of Rizq and the Arwah. Uh, even before the birth of the Imam, but at the same time as it being the night of the um, birth of the Imam as well, special du'as mm -hmm. and uh, an Imam asking his followers to take refuge, to seek help, to take aid, uh, to have that tranquility and peace of mind, and peace of heart, uh, peace in their heart through the du'as of the Imam. Mm. Uh, du'as are fundamentally adhkar. Du'as are fundamentally adhkar. And adhkar uh, work upon the soul of human beings. Adhkar uh, are means whereby the soul can attach itself to God. Huh? Um, you know, we have a very, very true saying in our school of thought that says du'as are the ascending Qur'an. You see? Um, the Quran descends, uh, it guides us, it guides us to those who can elaborate upon it, those who can teach us its secrets, for example, and we use those to uh, ascend to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, and uh, I think on a, on a, how can I call it, a, a literary level, on a level of uh, du'as themselves, uh, they, ref they reflect the role of the uh, Khalifatullah fil Ard. It reflects the, the role of the uh, Awliyaullah par excellence, which is basically, again, to carry us back to Allah. This is what the Holy Prophet Sallallahu came to, to do, to show us the way to, back to Allah. And the Imams uh, in particular, and the Ahlul Bayt salam, in general, uh, are there to carry us back to Allah, to show us the path back to Allah. And one very particular path is du'a. You see, du'a, which is dhikr. And when we look at all of our activities in Islam, it's about dhikr. Because the fundamental problem that human beings today have is one of what? Ghafla, of forgetfulness, forgetting their Lord, forgetting themselves forgetting what they stand for, what they're supposed to be doing, and so forth. And so, du'a actually uh, is a means of overcoming that. As rightly pointed out uh, in regards to the du'a, you know, obviously this in the Tawqi we see that it comes right after where Imam is talking about the fitna, mm -hmm. where Imam is talking about that there will be a long sort of occultation, mm -hmm. and we have seen in other Tawqi and also Riwayat as well, the sixth Imam also mentions that there will be a long duration that mm. Imam will not come and people will be, uh, you, know, t you know, basically very uh, scared or worrying about their Iman, losing their Iman. The famous dua which is, Ya Muqallib al qulub Thabbit Qalbi al Adinik, which was given by the sixth Imam. You know, this is the period that mm. the Imam have talked about and the Tawqi also is indicating after all this fitna. You have. Now, obviously, we see that there is some sort of like a program by which this tawqi is indicating us towards that you know our duties like for example on a friday you have dua nutba mm. in which during the whole week we remember the imam waqt mm. the imam of the time in which dua nutba we recite you know where is this sort of 
you know, one who will establish the Sharia, mm. will create the peace, will get rid of the zulm. Mm. You know, where is he? You know, we are asking, we are crying, we are doing nudba, you know, for him. We are remembering him. Mm. That's for the every Friday, which is the day of Imam Zaman, right? And we do the ziyarat of Imam Zaman, which is particularly for the day of Friday. Mm. Then the ziyarat of Ali Yaseen, which is of Imam Zaman as well. So we see that, you know, there's a, a, a very strong presence of the Imam during the whole week. Friday, which is the day considered to be a day of holiday. Mm -hmm. You know, people are not going to work. Mm -hmm. So this means that this day is being dedicated to the Imam of the time. You know, they should give this to the Imam of the time, this day, with the Nudba it begins. You know, now uh, Salatul Juma also want to have that aspect where you take the names of the Imam and you stand, you're reminded of the Imam on that day of of Friday, I just got reminded of a very amazing uh, reminder or advice of Ayatollah Kashmiri, you know, the great scholar of Arif, who was the student of Sayyid Ali Qazi Tawadubad. Mm. He was a ajube, you know, he was a mysterious mm. figure. And when we ask him about him, they say, yes, you create a relationship with the Imam. Speak to the Imam. You know, know that, you know, he's there for you. And, uh, and to the extent that the ulama of akhlaq, they say every day give an hour to imam only. Mm -hmm. Giving sadaqa on behalf of him, for example. You know, so there's a lot of sort of, uh, you know, uh, ways that one could program oneself mm -hmm. to remember the imam into their sort of daily activity and particularly you know on a Friday or you have these dua Allahumma balligh mawlaya sahib al zaman dua ahad for example we see all of these things which kind of gives us a way to really connect to the imam mm -hmm. yeah. well, interesting, interestingly as you said that um, uh, you know there are many hadith that say that time will come for example, where uh, we will forget about our Imam, you know, and uh, the reason why we forget about the Imam is because we are not making any attempt to get to know him. And I think a lot of these hadith and so forth tell us this, you know, how ways that we get, we get to know him. Knowing him meaning to see his real role in our lives and maybe even sometimes to even have a physical uh, encounter with him. And this is what a lot of these uh, du'as are really, and these statements are really indicating. How do we, uh, uh, what is the program for us to make him uh, uh, present in our lives? And um, one of them, uh, apart from the, 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 the active things that we do, um, there, there, there's also the negative part. What I mean by negative, I don't mean negative in a bad sense. I mean negative by, by not doing something. You know, m most of our, the, 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 our laws uh, yeah, are, are what to do and what not to do, you see? Uh, what to do is the positive, what, to, what not to do is the negative. You avoid the negative, then you become uh, pleased, uh, pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And um, he says, um, nothing, in, in the same tawqi, he says, nothing is hidden from us. We are conscious of the problems and the degradation which all of you are enduring right now. Because at that particular point, uh, what he's talking about is those uh, Shias who are under very, very st strict hardship. And he said the reason for all this is that you are indulging in all those prohibited things which your elders used to abstain and you have abandoned the promise and the pledge that was taken from you as if you have never known this promise. You know, I think uh, the promise of, of uh, Alas is, is abandoning that, yeah. knowing that, you know, Allah is your Lord and that you should be always conscious of him. Um, but also that you are doing what was prohibited. Uh, you are doing what your fathers knew were prohibited um, and brought them closer to him. You see? And so um, one of the things that we need to do is to also stay away from those prohibited things. A prohibited thing is not just only staying away, staying away 
um, from the halal and haram, which is very important. Sorry, for staying away from the halal, haram, which is very important. But also, it means being able to know where you should align yourself in society. You know, what are the paths that, might, that would lead to evil and paths that might lead to good, for example. And to be able to choose uh, those, the, the right path. You know, for example, um, being able to know who our oppressors are. You know, and do bara'at with them, from them. Uh, you see? And not follow them, even though what they might appear to be doing is something that might be sanctioned in Sharia, you know, but nevertheless might be uh, wrong from the point of view that your source of, 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 of that information is them. Um, I think one of the most important um, aspects of be, being close to, to our imam is, as was mentioned, doing things that are related to him as an existent, as an existing person, like doing sadaqah for him, talking to him, sending messages for him, you know, um, uh, seeking his guidance directly, you know, and then entering into a state of sabr and expectation that he will give you that answer. When you, give, you get that answer, what it does, it, uh, it, it increases your belief in the imam. It increases your relationship with the imam. It makes you stay away from those things that separate you from the imam. Right. So basically, it's, it's a, a realizing him and his presence as something that is very close and physical. Right. Right. And exactly. which is, uh, you know, and in order to do that, uh, are all these sort of mustahabbat, uh, which are mentioned even like for example you have the uh, uh, the the habit of writing the ariza like mm. the letter which mm. is written mm. to the imam of the mm. time mm. you know which we write either on the 15th or any other time it could be written right. for example and also the visitation like for example you have you know masjid al sahla mm. or even jam karan mm. you know which you know people say that okay that presence that huzur is felt there uh, you know uh, in that masjid that special yes. prayers of Imam Zamana is performed. Yes. Yeah. Yes. yeah. I, I think also we need we need to be, be aware uh, uh, that he um, responds to our requests sometimes without us actually d directly asking him. You know, but the method and the means by which the request is answered has a miraculous aspect to it where he is actually present in that particular particular response. i give you a good example. I remember there's a, there's a lady who exists right now who is still alive, an older lady, who gave me a very interesting story. She went to Mecca uh, and uh, she went she, for the Hajj. And it was in the summertime. And uh, after the the the, 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 the Salat Zohar, she is ready to go home, go to her hotel or wherever she's staying. And uh, she has to cross the courtyard, which is under the sun. And she, can't, she couldn't find her slippers. And she's wondering what to do. Okay, what do I do? How do I get over there? That in itself is a, is a kind of a dua, you know. Right? When you're confronted with, what should, I, what should I do? You know? This is a dua. Your soul is giving that dua up. Not, not, your, not your tongue. She said, suddenly she saw a young man, a young Arab man, uh, wearing lily white uh, thobe, lily white clothing, dash dasha. And he came up to her, he said, um, Mother, what is the problem? Okay, now here's Imam, for example, you know how he treats uh, Sheikh Mufid, you know, calls him his friend. Uh -huh. So he's calling this young man, she doesn't know his Imam. He, he looks at her and he says, Mother, which is very, very respectable and also very humble. Uh? Your Imam is calling you Mother. What seems to be the problem? She says, I lost my slippers and I can't cross that huge courtyard barefooted. I don't know what to do. She said the man bent down and took his shoes off and said, try these on. When she looked down, she saw there were women's shoes, women's slippers. She put on the slipper and it was her exact size. She looked up, the person was gone. Huh? She said she crossed over easily. And interestingly, 
she, she still had those slippers. She said she has very, very bad knee problems. But whenever she puts those slippers on, the knee problems go away. That's so you see? Yeah. You know, and you find many, many cases like that. I remember, and, and it happens in Hajj a lot. I remember one woman was telling me also that um, she was in the crush of people. And she felt that she was going to be, going to die. You see? And, um, you know, she saw this man come to her and just lead her out of the, 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 um, the crush. You know, and she she wanted to know who he was, and he was gone. And so this is how Imam how he how he intervenes in our lives. You know, I think we have to be prepared to be always looking out for him, looking out for him, because we might utter uh, a prayer from our soul, not from our tongue. You know, and our Imam comes to help us, and we only find out that he is our Imam when he's gone. But there are those who. Uh, have a certain level of spirituality where they know who he is when he comes. He announces himself to them when he comes, and so they're able to engage with, with him in some kind of discourse, you see? But, um, yeah, I think, uh, you know, we, we need to re reassert this and to re-emphasize that it is necessary for us to treat our imam as alive, as real, as here. You know, because if we don't, we are actually forgetting about him. We are actually putting him in a kind of a category of somebody who went, was in the past and is not involved in our lives today. And if we do this, if we behave to somebody as if they are absent, then it's a bit of an insult, actually. You know, it's like if, for example, you're in this room and I'm not giving you any attention whatsoever. I, I talk about you to other people, you know, but I don't speak to you. I don't acknowledge you in the room. It's a kind of a it's a kind of a rudeness, really. You see, um, he's our imam. We love him, and so we need to do things to show that love for him. When we do this, he's just. He will show his love back to us. Right, right. Very interesting. And uh, the the what I see here is the is the element of ikhlas, mm -hmm. you know, sincerity, uh, you know, to create that relationship. Mm -hmm like as you were reading earlier, that one should refrain from those things which will bring about contamination of the heart, mm. such as sins. Mm. And that sort of, uh, uh, you know, that connection with the Imam, that frequency mm. will not really, you know, match. Yes. You know, I was, uh, interestingly, uh, I think, was it yesterday? I think, yeah, I was, uh, day before yesterday. I went to someone's house to recite uh, Aghda, mm -hmm. you know, a, a very young sort of Iranian brother uh, married to an uh, African sister. And uh, this young, uh, you know, we live in the same city, but, but I never saw him. And, never. and then he s was speaking and, uh, and we were about to leave and he had a sort of like a, like a plaque of Ya Aba Saleh Mahdi mm -hmm. at the door. He said, you know, do you know this who this? I said, yes, of course. Mm. He said, he's my, uh, he's my, everything is from him, from mm. him. I never realized that this young lad would be like this. Mm. But he was speaking about Imam Mahdi as if he's, you know, whatever I get is from him. Yes. And he's a mechanic. Right. And he says, I told him that, oh, why don't you do Sifarish? You know, why don't you tell him to, you know, have said, so you speak to him. Mm. You don't need Sifarish mm. with him. Yes. I mean, he's it's so true. amazing. Yes. And then I said, well, I'm a, you know, I've been very far. I'm a sinner. And, you know, he, I, he turned my face. Mm. You know, when I speak, mm. he said, he will never turn his face. Mm. Mm. He yes. will never turn yes. his face. Yes. I was like, wow, man, look at the, <laughs> look at the iman of this yes. young, right? You know, he's like that. Yes. You know what I mean? So something that, he says, you need that pure heart. And this is what I mean by democratic, right? This is what I mean by democratic or egalitarian. You know, the imam does not say, I am gonna, going to be close to this, to X, because he's an alim. You know, a big alim or a small alim. Huh? Yeah. You know, I'm going to be close to X because X recognizes me. X, X is, it loves me. You know, X wants me to be in their life. You see, X is sending sadaqa for me. Yeah. You know, X is praying for me. You see? And when you do all these things, he says, this is a, my, my follower. 
rather than somebody like me, for example, who can talk about the theory and why it's this and why it's that, you know, but might not be doing those things that get them too, too, too close to Allah. Right. You see, yeah. to get close yeah. to our Imam. You know, they are doing these things. So right. there's something for th that these, the surprise that you had, the surprise that I'm having, as is actually something that is teaching us. Yeah. Okay, and who is teaching us? A mechanic. Yeah. Right. I think, you know, I think, you know, <laughs> from among, in our community, um, I think that people tend to raise ulama to a level of a fetish. Okay? Respect is important. Um, relying upon them for guidance is important, is important. But when I say we raise them to the level of a fetish, it's almost like an idol. You know, that you, you, you think that they are, they, they have this secret, that special secret. You know, that they alone know how they get to God, get close to God. No. Right? You mentioned ikhlas. Ikhlas is the most important uh, element in our identities as Shia. And we have to ask that question, are we really sincere and truthful in our claim that we are the ones that follow the Imam of our time? Yeah. You know, this reminded me of a very famous incident which is reported uh, you know, by the son of Allama Amini. Mm. Allama Amini, the Sahib Ghadir, right. the one who wrote Ghadir. His son reports this and he says that you know, you know, during that time there was no light, you know, they used to do kerosene mm. lamps and stuff like that, you know, Allama Amini's time, yes. you know, his son was in a, in a madrasa, in a seminary, mm. and he, uh, and there was a khadim, there was a sort of like a person who work, you yes. know, like a caretaker yes. of the, of the seminary, and he would always ask the students, you know, you study, you do mubahisa, mm. I will wash your clothes, mm. He will run up the market to buy the groceries mm. for them so that you study, I'll get the grocery, mm. clean up, everything, always helpful. And he was, I mean, obviously caretaker is not very educated right. or having a mama or right. knowledgeable. It's, 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 it's not a prestigious Presti job. Yeah, yes. I mean, it's just like a khadim. Yes. You know what I mean? Making chai, cleaning, bathroom, washroom, you know, locking up the doors so, so Allama Amini's son, the Sahib Ghadir, his son says, I, Fajr, you know, before, you know, Fajr, I went to the house, the pound in the madrasa to make wudu for Salatul Layl. Then I saw this hujra, this room of this caretaker, which was burst of light coming out of it. Mm. Light was coming out of the doors, uh, the, basically the passageway of the doors and windows. I said, what is this? I mean, this is, there's no light, you know, this small right. kerosene, what's this light? So he says, I got closer to this room and then I heard there's somebody speaking and this caretaker is replying. Mm. There's a conversation going on and this man who was speaking, I just couldn't figure out what he's saying. But what the caretaker is responding, I could hear, mm. I could understand. Right. Then all of a sudden this light kind of gradually dims and disappears right. and then I knock the door. This caretaker opened the door, Khadim opened the door, and then he asked me, you know, what's up, what's up, basically, you know what, you know, so I said, you know, who was that, what was that, I saw it, I saw that light, who was that, and what was that, he said, oh, nothing, nothing, you know, nobody, he said, no, you have to tell me, otherwise I will go now and I will wake up everybody in the madrasa, mm. then he jaldi quickly pulled him, you know, inside the room, and then they start, and he said that, if you promise me, and it was a Thursday night, right. apparently, if you promise me till tomorrow, Asar, that you will not tell anyone what I'm telling you, mm. then I'll tell you. Right. He says, okay, you know, I promise you, it's not much, it's Thursday and Friday and then tomorrow. Then he says, this was Imam Zaman. Mm. And there is somebody in some place who have died and I'm making you to transfer there to take care of that place now. Your duty here is finished now. So Amar Amin's son yeah. was shocked. You know, we are known as the soldiers of Imam Zaman, mm -hmm. Talabe. Right. You know what I mean? Right. You know, because Imam Zaman have special, yes. you know, uh, relationship with the scholars, with the ulama, mm -hmm. with the Talabe. But here is a khadim. Yeah. He's just a caretaker. He's just a worker. 
and nobody really counts him. Mm. You know, but he's running around, he does the mashti, you do this mashti, you know what I mean? Mm. But Imam Zawan coming to him and I'm pointing him. And then, you know, next day, next morning, Alamamini's son says that I, I was shocked. I was just thinking that what, where am I and what am I doing? You know, all this activity of bahs right. or mubaisa and namaz or salat or duas or, mm. you know, particular, you know, program or this and mm. that, you know what I mean? And uh, uh, he says that, okay, I was just watching him all day. Wow, because he's barakah, man. Yeah. He's, this guy is someone who is in relationship yes. with. And this man, you know, he packed his very humble bag, you know, whatever it was, you know, torn or plastic bag of clothes and all that. And then he comes after Zuhr, you know, finished now and near the house he looks at the madrasa and then he seeks for halal from everybody, you know, forgive me if I haven't yes. done anything wrong. And then he walks outside the mother. So I saw him a few steps and then he disappeared. He disappears, right? He disappeared, yeah. Yes. So yes. I mean, you know, as you were mentioning about that story of that lady of Imam Zaman, yes, many times you have this, Imam also have in one of the duas, and it's talked about awtad, mm. you know, people, Imam's helpers, supporters are there. There are different levels and categories of these supporters. And as a matter of fact, even the you know, the naib hai khas se imam mm -hmm. were oil, you know, people who worked with kerosene, mm -hmm. with oil. Mm -hmm. They were not like scholars, scholars right. as such. Right. They were workers mm -hmm. in the house of the Imam Zaman who mm -hmm. would come and, and Imam chose them, you know, mm -hmm. right? So, I mean, that sincerity, yes. you know, that khulus. And, uh, you know, it's just a villager, just a khadim, you know, nothing but. He was someone who have attracted. Right. He has made his heart like how this mechanic I was telling him. That's right. You know, Imam Joy Park meeting. Mm -hmm. He said, Imam Joy Park meeting. Mm -hmm. In Joy Park Bazaar, yeah. in Park Bazaar, you can go with him. Imam, yeah. so there's Imam a goes in hadith there. that says, yeah. the Imam is not absent from us. We are absent from the Imam. You right. know, we have to bring ourselves back, not to his level, but to, to the level of, 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 that, that of insaniyat. Yeah. You know, on the level of our, in, our, our, our truthfulness and our purity with respect to uh, our responsibilities and each other and people and so forth, we have to, to reach that level in order to be in contact with him. You know, and that contact is going to be one that is very good, will, will, be, will, will empower us to be able to, to move forward. Yeah, definitely. It's really fascinating. You know, it's just your... You know, your jaw drops yeah. when you meet and see and hear about these yeah. people, as you were mentioning about this lady as yeah. well. So I, I, I was thinking, you know, uh, one very, very important way uh, to, to be in contact with our Imam, alayhi salam, is um, to be able to be like him, to be able to be like him. Um, what I mean is, you know, love. And connection is based upon similarities you know the more similarities you have with somebody the more you love them you see and um, one similarity that we should have with our imam for example purity of heart you know this is something that he has as well you know um, ikhlas this is something he has as well um, one of the things that we need to encourage also is to be like him a, as a social reformer as a reformer of society, you know, you have to stand up to falsehood and assert truth um, uh, to, be, to be like him. You know, I think the more we are like him in this regard, as well as the other ways, okay, mm -hmm. the closer we are, we, are, we are connected to him and the closer right. he, we will be able to see And him. one of his mission is that the establishment of justice yes. and, and getting rid of oppression uh, right, and, 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 and Amar bil Maruf, which Imam Hussain mm -hmm. alayhi salam also mentioned in his letter, and there's a similarity of Imam Hussain and mm -hmm. the 12th Imam as well. So we have to take that sort of daring yes. step to really speak against inja, you know, injustice that, yes. you know, injustices that are taking place. And yeah, definitely, it's, it's one of the nice ways of looking yeah. at it, what Imam, uh, basically doing what Imam wants yes. and what will be. Right. You know, doing and what imams have done in the past. Absolutely. In, you know, in terms of yeah. accommodating, 
you know, the oppressed ones, taking care of the oppressed ones, you know, right. attending to so their needs. You have to ask yourself, what would the Imam do in this time, you know, at this time of ours here right now? What would he do? You know, how would he answer some of these questions and these problems that we have? You know, we try to do this ourselves, you know, in whatever area that Allah makes available to us. Maybe he might make available to us only the context of our families, or maybe only the context of our families and friends, or maybe only in the context of our part of the city where we are living, you know, or maybe in the context of our city itself, or our country, or the world even, you know. Um, uh, and I think the more we, we enter into that, the more we are engrossed in that, the more he's going to help you, yeah. Um, of course, um, with other things yeah. as well. I mean, one of the things that we tend to see that kind of makes us a bit, uh, makes us away uh, from the path or from that remembrance is being preoccupied with our, uh, with the dunya, so mm -hmm. to speak. Mm -hmm. You know, there's so much out there uh, that really basically sucks us mm -hmm. into these activity. And sometimes even these activities uh, could have the religious color to it, mm. but it's not in depth. Right. You know, it's just like a sentimental and emotional sort of activity, mm. which perhaps may not have that, you know, I that sort of, uh, you know, weight, mm. substance to it. Mm. But somehow we indulge in that, we carry out uh, in that, and it becomes a very shallow and a very uh, superficial uh, sort of attachment. Uh, with the Imam, you know, uh, paying, yes. yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, a lot of Shias, I think, the vast majority of Shias um, are, are, are attached to the Imam only as an article of belief, you know, only as an article of belief, um, not as a possibility of an experience, you know, and, and I do not think there's anything wrong uh, with us, in fact, it's laudable in us to seek His face. Mm -hmm. You know, to seek His presence, because it is something natural for a human being. A human being says, "Your Imam is present." When, it's, when we hear that our Imam is present, for example, He's here on this earth. Uh, it's a natural thing for us to want to see Him and to be with Him, and so on. Right. You know, when you said that that. Uh, a, a person, the, the, this khadim walked off and then disappeared. Yeah? Where did he disappear to? He went to the Reba. He went to the Reba, his own Reba de Sogra, yeah. for example. You know, um, you know we know that uh, this uh, physical world has many dimensions, right? Many dimensions. As long as a world is made up of energy, is part of the physical world and energy has many dimensions and a dimension uh, a, a higher dimension than our three dimensions would be something that is invisible to us you know when it comes into the world it comes into the world in a kind of a miraculous way and it leaves in a miraculous way I give an example um, we live in a three dimension a three-dimensional world okay let's think about up down front back well, Imagine if we lived in a two-dimensional world, you know, um, where there was no up, let's say. There was just front and back. If somebody came to us here through the roof, it would look like a miracle. It would look like that person is appearing because we are, we, we, we are like this. We, we, not, we don't know what's going on up there. Up, up, up above our heads does not exist. Right? So if something is coming from above our heads, this is something that descends among us. This is something miraculous. This is an appearance in our world, you know, not, a, not, a, not an approach. You see, you know when something is approaching into your space. This is an appearance, a projection, in, projection into your world. And if that very same entity was taken upwards, let's say we attached some, some wires or some, some rope and pulled him up, you see, that disappearance also would seem to be miraculous. And so this person has such a close connection with the Imam that he is able to enter his world. I have many, many accounts like that, of people entering where the Imam is, you see? Um, so I think if you want to get into physics and so on, we are talking about the Imam in another dimension of the physical world, 
where I wish he could when he wish he could come in and he could and he could go out. Yeah. And in this I case where people can that's that's the term also used for the Imam is Zuhur. Mm. It's not Nuzul. Right, right. You know, it's Nuzul of the Quran. You see, and uh, it's Nuzul of Isa, mm. alayhi salam. Like, for example, the Quran talks about the, you know, the return of Hazrat Isa, alayhi salam. Right. It says Nuzul Isa. Mm. It's the Nuzul of Isa, alayhi salam. Mm. It's, the, it's the descent of Isa, yes. alayhi salam. But, but for the Imam, it talks about Zuhur. Mm. It's the appearing of Imam. Right. It's like, for example, you know, uh, if there will be a, like a group of people here, for instance, and something happens, you know, somebody goes fainted, and then we say, oh, is there a doctor? Mm -hmm. You know, there are a group of people, but we don't know who is the doctor. Right. But somebody says, oh, okay, I am. Mm -hmm. So this is, he was there, mm -hmm. and then he appeared. He was, right. you know, he was, he is our hair. He right. becomes, that we called him, and he, is, he was there already, yes. but we did not know he was there. Yes. And that is Zuhur. Yes. You know, that's like he comes in yeah. to take care of a that. A good example, a good example of, again, a sort of, a, how can I call it, a physical, from the point of view of physics, um, uh, from the way of explaining a lot of things, you know, or, 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 or offering an explanation, let's put it this way, is, this, is, is his um, uh, statements that uh, are his statements that he is knowledgeable of everything that we do. That's what the talk. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Of Talking everything that we of do. The Imam says yes. that. Yeah. He's knowledgeable of everything that we do. Right. Okay. Um, he's aware of this. How can he be? One says, maybe that's like God. That's applying God's, God's criteria to him. No. Again, this is in another dimension. When you're outside of this dimension, huh? yes, you have a heart attack. Yeah. You have. Yeah, yeah, you have you know, of everything. You have a, yes. You of see? what's there and what's going on. Exactly. Look yeah. at, uh, for example, our, our sat navs. You see, um, they, they go back to a satellite. Right. The satellite is above and right. it can encompass all of us moving around, you yeah. know, and speak to all of us in terms in of our own particular location, location and so yeah. forth and so on. Yeah. So we can explain this on a pure physical level. Why not even on a higher level on a spiritual basis? Sure, sure. Sure. Wonderful. Alhamdulillah. I think we have reached to the uh, end of the program. I would really thank you for being with us and enlightening us. And, uh, and thanks to our viewers for being with us as well. Uh, if it wasn't uh, that their presence and their support and their communication, perhaps we wouldn't be here either. You know, so we really ask you to pray for us and pray for all of you on this these blessed nights uh, remember us in your duas when you connect to the imam of our time inshallah and we will do the same inshallah may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala haste the reappearance of our 12th imam and includes us all as the faithful companions uh, thank you very much sheikh thank you. Thank, you. Thank, you. thank you and we'll see you again in our next program uh, which will be the final one uh, soon inshallah غفر الله لنا ولكم والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته